In this video, we're going to look at an HTML page that has a set of radio buttons. And there will be some JavaScript allowing the user to interact with these radio buttons and make a choice of sizes. This is our third version of this uh, page and, and JavaScript program. Um, this time, we're going to have JavaScript add the radio buttons dynamically to the HTML page. So the HTML page will be simpler. The JavaScript is going to be more complicated, but it's going to add dynamically. So we could have, ultimately, we could have a, the JavaScript read some file and get some data from the file and then make radio buttons. So it's leading towards a very sort of dynamic uh, a page. Um, so we're building up in our sophistication. This is version three of radio buttons. The code can be found at the URL seen here. So in terms of function, it's the same old choice. We have a four radio buttons and that we can choose their sizes. We'll choose a medium. Uh, there's some styling to highlight that the checked the label next to the check radio button differently. You can choose that size. There's an alert. There will be a console. Something in the console based on the choice. And then if we, and then something on the page. And then if we change the, the choice and the radio buttons, it cleared out the answer. And then we can uh, click the button again. Okay, so the style hasn't changed from previous versions, so we're not going to talk much about it. Look at previous versions of this radio button uh, discussion. Here is the HTML. Here's the open head and close head, and here's a link to the style. Here's a header for the top of the page. Here is a div. So we have no radio buttons or labels on this page. We are going to add them to this div. So this will be the container that we will add the radio buttons to, but they're not here in the HTML design. I did put the button here and the div here. They could also be added dynamically. Um, but I'm just trying to keep it simple and just have the radio buttons added. So I make, I design, I have some page. I know there are going to be choices. I'll make a place for the choices, but I'm saying I don't know what the choices are. Maybe this is a, a the radio buttons are for sizes and maybe the, the, the range of sizes may differ. Maybe I have some things in which I have an extra small and something, some other items I don't. So if I'm making this page dynamically, I can grab the sizes I'm going to display for the user uh, based on what's available or it's late in the sale and they don't have any more mediums. So they'll have smalls and larges. Or so. so for whatever reason, I want the sizes to be dynamic, but I didn't make other things dynamic. There could be more dynamic there. It doesn't have to be okay. And then I'm connecting here at the bottom to the uh, JavaScript. So let's, that's most of the work is in the JavaScript. So let's have a look. Okay. So uh, I am connecting, I'm making a, a button, a div, and a target. So there are two, this div is where the radio buttons will go. This div is where we'll display something that the user told us to remember, and then there'll be a button click. I'm enabling the button. I'm adding a click event for the button. I have two arrays for the sizes spelled out and for the letters. So I have, I have two designations of size. And now I have, I'm going to a uh, loop and form the buttons. And I have just two versions, different kinds of looping. So this is, I'll, I'll, I won't point out the interior of the loop, but just a loop. And then I'll show you uh, the uncommented one. But this is just an old style uh, loop. 
of a variable uh, i counter started at zero, array start at zero, go up to not including the length of the array, increment by one. So that's just sort of an, a, an old fashioned loop. Here is a for each loop over an array. And I'm working in here, I think in other examples, I might've called it item here, I'm calling it EL or I don't know, element. Um, I misspell it if I spelled out element too many times, I'd get it wrong at least twice. So EL for element and I for the, for the index. So I'm looping, I'm using a two argument loop the, uh, over the array the element and the and the index the counter. Okay. So I'm making, I'm dynamically making a page in sort of in this, I don't know, overall series, not these radio buttons, but in this overall HTML, CSS, JavaScript series, I've made dynamically the options for a uh, for a for a list of options in a select. Um, so there's some similarities here, but this is a more complicated thing. It's a radio button, the corresponding label, and also a corresponding break. Okay. So I'm saying uh, make make create a new element, which is an in, of the input type, and I've got a lot of things to do with it. So I gave it a simple name X, and then we had all these properties of radio buttons that we saw in the previous examples of radio buttons. And so I'm um, setting an attribute of type and setting it equal to radio. So that, that makes it type equals radio. I'm setting the value property to my counter I. When I have arrays, then I like the value to be the index of the array. That's very useful to me. Um, remember that radio buttons are grouped by their name attribute. And so we're giving all the radio buttons in this array. We're, make, we're making an array. We're making a set of radio buttons corresponding to the array. We're all giving them all the same name, rad size. Um, we're giving the radio buttons an ID, and I'm, and that's going to match up with the labels for property. And so I just said uh, rad plus the el the element i could have said rad plus i whatever something it just has to be something unique okay and then i'm also giving it a click event so i'm setting it's on click equal to handle radio click this so this is back to the on click version and so the on click the function had an argument of this so that was in the first version, it went out in the second version, and now it's back in because I'm back to an on click. Okay. And then I add that X, that input of the radio type to my target. The next sibling I want is going to be the label. So I decided to call it Y. I'm done with X, I could have used X, but I'm, I'm making a new thing, Y, creating a label element, I'm setting its for attribute to rad plus L, which matches the ID of the radio button. That's what makes them work as a pair, if you recall. Uh, this thing has a label has an open and a close. So I'm uh, getting the sort of the, I'm getting sort of into the inner HTML of, of my new thing, of my label. And so that's what this node is. So this now I'm between the open label and the close it label. And I am uh, putting some text in there, which is the element, uh, which is the small, medium, large, extra large. And I'm adding that uh, node to my label. And then I'm adding my label to my target div. So that was fun. Okay, so one more time, create a label, set its for attribute to uh, radio plus something that matches the ID of the radio. I'm creating a, a text node. I'm adding, this is going to be text that's going to be eventually here appending the child, but between the, the child, 
So I have open tags in HTML, I have open tags and closed tags, and what's between is the child. So this text, which said small, medium, or large, becomes the child of the label. So open label, the text, and close label, and then I'm adding the entire Y, which is the label I'm adding to my target div. And I put it next to the radio button, so they're siblings. And then I'm adding one more element, a break element, and adding that, so that was much easier. Breaks have no attributes or anything. And put them, put that in the target div. So that added all my radio buttons. Then I have the stuff I had before. Here is the clicking of the button. So I'm going to uh, try to get the user index. So again, I'm using the query selector. I'm going to the input with the name rad size and asking if it's checked and grabbing its value. And that was the index now, because I'm working with arrays. So that is an index. So I, that's why I called it user index. And then I can uh, use that with my sizes array and sizes size letter array. And they're parallel arrays, so they use the same index. And so I have access to the to the word spelled out and to the letter. So this is small and S or medium and M. And I console logged it and I put it on the page and I disabled the button. And this was all in a try catch. And basically it was, uh, the hard part here is the radio button might not be checked. We know there are radio buttons with this name. We just made them and added them to the page. But the, uh, the thing that might go wrong is the user might not uh, check any of the radio buttons. And so if the try, if this doesn't work, then we end up at the catch where we say, please choose a size. Here's the radio click event. And I'm changing the divs inner HTML to a non-breaking space. I'm uh disable or sorry re-enabling the button so that you can click it again and in the console log i'm showing uh as they click on things i'm showing the elements value which should be the uh, i and then the sizes with that so this is the this is the array at that index and this is what i got from my my element my radio button Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you. So I thank you for your attention.